Hi, my name is Robin Wong. In this video, I'm going to share some important considerations you have to ask yourself before you buy a new camera. Some of these considerations are more applicable to newcomers to photography, but I believe some of them are also relevant to those of you looking to upgrade from your current camera to a new one. I have been asked a lot of times, Robin, what camera should I buy? Which is the best camera that suited for me? And I want to consolidate my answers that I've given over the years into this one simple video so that in the future, if anyone is asking me any questions, I can just show this video to answer them. Let's get started. Before we dive in too far, allow me to clarify a few things. That it's not about a video looking for that perfect camera. In fact, I've made a video here recently, please watch it if you haven't. I talk about how there is no perfect camera, there's no point looking for the best camera, it does not exist. If you look at a camera as a piece of gadget, if you just look at the paper specifications, if you're chasing that megapixel number, if you're chasing that clean high ISO, the best dynamic range, this is not the video for you. There are a lot of other YouTubers or content that is made to tell you which camera performs more superior than the others. I'm not doing that. I don't want to add to that digital noise. However, if you look at a camera as a photographer's weapon, if you look at a camera as a tool for you to create art, if you want to learn photography, if you want to practice photography as a craft, then you have to ask yourself these few considerations that I'm sharing in this video. The first question that you have to ask yourself is, what are you going to use the camera for? What is the purpose of your photography? What are you shooting? Knowing the purpose of your photography will determine what camera that you are using it for. For example, if you want to travel, if you want to record memories and just take photographs during your holiday, then carrying a huge monstrous size DSLR, such as the Canon 1D Mark II or the Nikon D5 will be a little bit too much and you don't really need the super autofocus performance. You don't really need that 20 frames per second burst when you're taking photographs of your children blowing off the candle of the birthday cake. Similarly, if you are shooting sports, and if you are going to do a lot of critical moment photography, and you do need that raw verse power, if you need the best of the best autofocus to capture every single moment, then the entry level DSLR will not be sufficient to do what you want to do. If you are a beginner, you just started on photography, you don't know what shutter speed is, you don't know what ISO and aperture is, you don't know what white balance or metering is, and you're still figuring things out, or if you have not fully mastered the exposure triangle, then getting the best of the best and the most expensive camera will not make a difference in your learning journey. Pick up any DSLR or entry-level mirrorless cameras, then spend some time with these cameras. You may need a year or two or three years to fully learn learn and master the basics and fundamentals of photography. After that, then the better cameras or the higher upgrades will make a real difference in your photography. Ask yourself what you want to do, buy the camera that is more suited for you. Just don't go for the most expensive one straight away because trust me, it will not make any difference in making you a better photographer. Consideration number two, how the camera fits your hands. We all have different hands, all the camera designs are different. One camera cannot fit everyone perfectly. It is like shoes. One size shoes cannot fit all feet. And even the same size shoes, they have different cutting. And it doesn't mean that by wearing one size, you buy another shoe, it will fit perfectly the same. You have to try it before you figure out whether it suits you or not. Same with the camera. One reviewer said, this is the best, best camera. This is a huge upgrade. It has all the best specifications in 2020. You must buy this camera. But without trying the camera in your hand, it will be one of the biggest mistakes that you make while buying a new camera. Handling of the camera is very important. You're gonna use the camera if the camera does not feel comfortable in your hand, if it doesn't feel right. If you don't feel secure, if you don't feel confident, you don't love holding the camera. 
What is the point buying the camera that you're going to use again and again? You don't even like holding it. So guys, please go to the camera store. Don't just buy it online. Hold the camera in your hands. See how it fits, how comfortable it is. Because if you don't like holding the camera, you will not be using the camera frequent enough. Then what is the point even if the camera has very good specification list? Consideration number three. Are you fit enough to handle the camera of choice? I've heard a lot of horror stories, photographers going hiking up a mountain, they carry in the backpack, total gear of about more than 10 kilograms, two cameras, three or four lenses, tripod, drinking water, and they actually have slit this, or they have some injuries, like they injured their knee, or they sprained their ankle. You know, carrying the best of the best does not necessarily equate to good results if you cannot even use the equipment properly. I'm not specifically talking about old age. Please do not get me wrong. I have a photographer friend who is younger than me. She's in her 20s. She's in her prime. She's a wedding photographer. She used a Canon 5D Mark II. This happened like five or six years ago with a 70 to 200 f 2.8 L lens. Perfectly decent combination for any event or wedding shooters. It is in fact a must-have lens if you are doing serious portraits or wedding photography. And you know what? She broke her wrist. It took her weeks to recover, maybe even more than a month. After that, she bought an Olympus OMD EM5. Be careful of what kind of equipment that you are handling. Know your limits. The bigger the camera, it doesn't necessarily mean the better the camera is. Choose a camera that you can handle and hold comfortably for a long shooting duration of time. The last consideration that I want to talk about is budget. You don't have to break the bank to buy a camera. It doesn't matter if you don't have the best camera or if you think that your camera is not good enough. Any camera today, even the lowest level entry level camera, is more than good enough and can get the job done. Please do not stress out and worry about, oh, you know, my friend has a better camera than me. Oh, you know, if I need to get that shot, I need a better camera and lens. Buy what you can within the budget that you can afford. Trust me, there are a lot of other factors that is at play that determine about good photography than good equipment. Having the best camera doesn't necessarily make you a better photographer. In fact, I know a lot of photographers who don't necessarily shoot with the best of the best and the latest camera today. They may be using a camera from five years or even eight years ago, and they still continue to produce amazing art. You may have a new camera today, but it doesn't mean that the camera you have bought yesterday have stopped functioning and cannot produce amazing results. While we are on the topic of budget, please don't just put all the eggs in one basket on the camera. There are a lot of other things that you have to consider buying as well. A lot of people spend so much money on a camera, but they chip out on the lens that they pair with the camera, they buy cheaper memory cards, and they don't even have spare batteries. Do sell a budget for a high-speed memory card for at least one spare battery, a good quality tripod, a good bag to house your camera, and of course, a good quality quality lens that goes with your camera if the camera doesn't come with a kit lens. You may have a high grade performing camera, but if you're using a subpar lens, that performance of your camera will be limited by what the lens can do. If you don't have a spare battery, you're limited to what you can do with just one battery capacity. If you have a slow memory card, what's the point of having a super fast performing camera? Do set a bit of a budget for all these other things as well. I'm not sure if you can see from this video recording, it is starting to rain in Kuala Lumpur and I have to end this video. Guys, please do not just look at paper specifications when you are considering to buy a camera. The paper specifications don't tell you everything. There's a lot more to a camera than just the high ISO performance, fast autofocus, highest megapixel count. What I'm telling you is please try the camera, go to a camera store, see how the camera fits your hand 
and choose the camera that fits your purpose of photography. We are all different. We all shoot different things. You shouldn't be listening to just one or two photographers who tell you which is the better camera to get. Decide for yourself what camera that you want to buy. Also, big cameras doesn't necessarily mean the camera will be better. Make sure that you are able to manage the camera and lenses that you are buying. Make sure that you are fit enough to be able to handle your equipment. And finally, buy the camera that you can afford. Work around with the budget that you have. You don't have to break a bank to go and get the best of the best camera. Even the entry-level camera is already very good. And also set aside a little bit of budget to get a better memory card, to get a spare battery and a good lens to pair with your camera. If you find this sharing useful, please give me a thumbs up. If you have other tips to share on what to consider when buying a new camera, please leave it in the comments below. I would definitely love to hear from you. Until the next video, please remember to go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.